welcome. In this video clip, we will look at the subtraction strategy called adding up. This strategy gives students the chance to use addition to solve a subtraction problem. It may be helpful for students to have prior experiences subtracting with a removal strategy, meaning they start with the whole number and take away or remove objects to find a part of the whole. They need to understand that subtraction equations consist of a subtrahend, which is the smaller number being subtracted, and a minuend, which is the whole amount. The student will add up from the number being subtracted, the subtrahend, to the whole, the minuend. As students begin to understand that subtraction is finding the difference between two numbers, they will start to realize that they can start with the smaller number and add up until they reach the whole. It is about asking, how much more do I need to add to this number to reach the whole? Students will start out by adding up in smaller intervals, but the more practice and experience they have with this strategy, the larger jumps or intervals they will make when adding. This strategy will be seen throughout K-5. It specifically relates to the computational fluency standards. It requires that students use their knowledge of numbers and number relationships to subtract fluently. This strategy is most helpful for students when the subtrahend is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Let's say, for example, that a child is trying to determine what 13 minus 9 is. It would be more efficient and leave less chance for error if the child were to start with the subtrahend, the smaller number, and add up to the minuend whole number, like 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The difference between the 9 and 13 would be 4. With the subtraction removal strategy, students would have to count backwards from 13 down to 4, which is not as efficient. Adding up strategy is also helpful for students when they begin to borrow to solve equations. Using the adding up strategy is another option for those that are not comfortable borrowing or tend to make careless mistakes when borrowing. This strategy will begin to make more sense to the students as they understand the relationship between addition and subtraction. Addition being when two parts come together to make a whole, and subtraction being when you are given the whole and one of the parts, and you have to determine what the other part is. The adding up strategy is meant to be a mental math strategy, and after more practice and experience, it will be. It will build on their knowledge of basic facts, doubles, making 10, and counting on. With that said, when first introducing it to students, it may be helpful for them to have access to manipulatives such as counters, a number line, or unifix cues. This will assist in making sure they truly understand what is happening when you use this strategy and not that they are simply learning the procedure. Now, I will model introducing the adding up strategy to your students. If I was adding three plus five, I am looking for the whole or total when I put those two numbers together, which would be Eight here, three plus five more is eight. What pet parts make up the eight? Right, the three and the five. Now let's look at one using subtraction. Let's look at eight minus five. This time I know what the whole amount is. The whole amount is eight, and I'm going to take away part of eight. How much are we taking away? We're gonna take away five. So if I start with eight and take away five, the part I'm left with is three. So if we're looking at the parts that make the whole, the eight, the parts that make the eight were three and five. Let's look at the subtraction problem eight minus five again, but let's think of it a different way. If I know five is part of the eight and that I'm trying to find the other part of the whole, then I can ask the question, how many more do I need to make eight? You already have five, so you can count up five, six, seven, eight. So how many did I need to get to eight? Three. We found the same difference counting up as we did when we counted backwards to find the answer. Let's solve this problem using the adding up strategy. 16 minus 12. Remember, we are looking for the difference between 12 and 16, or how many more we would need to get to 16 from 12. So if we start with 12 and count up to 16, how many more did we need? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Four, we would need four more to get from 12 to 16. If you are in the upper grades, you may want to continue to show students how this strategy would work with larger numbers. For example, let's do 34 minus 15. To solve this problem, we would normally borrow a 10 from the tens place to change the four in the ones place to a 14. 
Using the adding up strategy, students would not have to use the borrowing strategy, which often causes confusion and errors. Students would follow the same procedure as before with the smaller numbers. We would start with the subtrahend, which is 15, and count up or add up till we get to the minuend, or the whole of 34. Being that the numbers are bigger, we can make larger jumps. If we start with 15, we can add 5 to get to 20. Then we could add 10 more to get to 30. Last, we would add 4 to get to the minuend of 34. All together, you take the parts that you added, all together we added 19. So, 34 take away 15 equals 19. The more students practice this strategy, the more efficient and fluent they will become with subtraction.